Hey guys, I just got off a Skype chat a little while ago with Chris. Um, you may know his channel, Chris B257, and he and I have been YouTube and Skype buddies for quite some time. And um, we were talking about gardening, and I realized it had been just about a month since I gave you my last update, and I told you I'd be shooting another video, just a quick one, in about a month. So that's what I'm doing. I just want to show you the the garden as it uh, as it appears today so starting over here these little dwarf sunflowers and these get really big heads uh, but they've come up and then I other plantings that I did they're starting to finally sprout we had a dry spell and uh, they were slow coming up and the catnip is doing oh well catnip does well anywhere but um, it's a mint and it spreads and then speaking of mint, didn't show you this last time, but this is a patch of spearmint. Now this started as one small plant right here in the center that Kim planted. And in a, in a, in a season's time, you see what it has done. It's gone everywhere, and we're going to let it. I'll just keep it mowed out of the grass, but she takes this and, and dries it for her spearmint tea. And uh, I think she's going to start harvesting some spearmint essential oil. You do that with um, ethyl alcohol. It's a process, but um, you evaporate the alcohol after you do all that, and you get pure essential oil. And what she's going to use it for, I don't know, but it is uh, medicinal, and it's very fragrant. And I even like a cup of hot mint tea now and again. But anyway, um, over here, the black oil sunflowers, and we just planted the same seed as we feed the birds, and they've come up, um, and they're going to have flower heads on them pretty soon they already track the sun um, I've noticed that so um, we're, we're waiting to see those and they just they give a really nice splash of color that lettuce row um, you see it's coming up and we're harvesting this already there's a couple of small dill plants that are growing up and dill kind of grows wherever it wants and never had to plant dill since the first time so we have some growing here we have a piece, uh, well, there's a pretty good dill plant here alongside the onions. There is also one down here at the end of this spinach row. Now, this is last year's spinach. You see that dill there? There's three of them growing there, so we won't have to ever plant any dill, I don't think. It comes up volunteer. But this is last year's spinach, and we're letting it go to seed. And this is where my seed stock comes from, or, you know, for successive plantings in the, in the next few years. I've got a lot of these. And since Bloomsdale is a, an heirloom, it's just fine to harvest the seed. The broccoli, if you look down in the center of each one of these broccoli plants, you can see about a thumb size little head starting to form. So it won't take long, probably another month or so, and we'll be cutting these. And then we'll be waiting for the bonus shoots. And that is the new spinach that we planted I think it was just at the seedling stage when I showed you guys last. A couple weeds I have to get in there and pull um, now that they've come up above the level of the spinach. Weeds have a funny way of mimicking the plants they're growing in uh, amongst. But we'll be snatching those out of there. And we're already harvesting this new spinach. The kale, um, that's the stuff I raked. Then you see that it's, uh, it's formed a really nice canopy. And the ground is always cool and moist under there. So, uh, the kale did well, and it responded to the to the rake thinning. It wouldn't be that big had I not rake thinned it, and it's going to get a lot bigger. And the onions are at pulling stage, as I call it, and we only grow these to, for pull, to pull for table onions, green onions, if, uh, if you know what I'm talking about. We don't raise these for storage bulbs. They're cheap enough at the supermarket, and we just buy bags of onions. And the parsley and cilantro is coming along nicely. The parsley is still determined to seed, and we just come and, and snip off those seeds, and it uh, we're getting leaf underneath, but then that's new parsley right there on this side of it um, that's going to be big enough to start getting lots of leaf off of. We're still digging down in there and getting plenty of uh, parsley. We don't use a ton of it, but it's nice to have. The tomatoes, um, I've tied them once on their stakes, and I'm keeping them pruned really only want about two main stems on a tomato plant um, so to get the best yields and we have some green ones on just about all of them there's a little cluster of green ones 
but I'll get in here again and I'll sucker them. Um, I'm going to let these two stems be the main ones and like this one right here. Now it's got fruit on it and it's tempting. Uh, it's tempting to leave that go, but I believe I'm going to come and snip that off and just let the energy of the plant go into these two main stems. And then they'll be tied up a little bit higher. But the rest of these are staying pretty much in line. There's still, there's always suckering to do on these tomatoes. They grow that fast once they get their feet under them. And then this is the grass that I planted the last time. I mowed it early this morning for the first time and it came in really nice and thick. So it's going to do just fine. And then the Stellas back here, they, they've come into bloom. And this Menarda next to the bird bath and at the end of this little stone bed, it'll start blooming. And they have a reddish purple flower. They're really pretty. Bees love these too. It's called bee balm. Um, it's a common name for it. And then more Stellas and the beans are starting to really go up that trellis. I seeded some grass back here and then then we had a good strong wind and I think it blew a lot of my seed away but we're getting some germination. What I'll do is I'll overseed this um, after we're through walking back here. I'm starting to work on that fence back here finally. I've got my uprights in place and my corner fixed and got all that fixed. I uh, made this little diagonal strap to pull that thing plumb and then when we attach the wood fence to it and then put our 4x4s in the ground, that'll hold everything set. And the peppers are just now starting to come up. A few of them have blossoms. It's just about this time of year uh, when they start setting blossoms, I'll come out here and I'll spray them with Epsom salts. And that helps them set fruit, but I won't do that until there are a whole lot more blossoms on them. And that's, that's about all peppers ask for. They don't like to be fussed with. Um, and they certainly don't like to be fertilized, so they're just getting whatever nutrients they need out of this soil, which is good rich soil. And then the St. John's wort is going to be covered in these yellow flowers before very long. Um, here's a cluster of them here. And Kim said she was going to harvest these. I don't know exactly what you do with the flowers afterward, but I have taken St. John's wort in the past. So what I'm hoping for soon is the weeds and clover <laughs> that's in the rest of the lawn to infiltrate that beautiful golf course looking stuff that I planted and make it look like the rest of the lawn. I don't fuss over weeds so much and I don't mind clover and dandelions. I just mow the things down. But that's it. That's a, a short garden update. Everything's growing. Um, we've had ample rain and I've, I've watered in between when the, when the rains didn't come to my satisfaction and uh, yeah we're, we're doing well here in uh, toward the end of June so we'll see you later guys and uh, thanks for watching have a great day